Let's keep it going. Lots of love, lots of energy. Please welcome to the stage, Paul Duncaster. Where are you, Paul? Here he comes. The hands I was holding were not those of my daughter, but they easily could have been. Erin was three years old, bright red hair, and seriously fair skin, which I clearly do not have. But my new girlfriend did. And her presence was a pretty big deal. My father was one of six. My mother was one of 10. I have 46 first cousins. And at the age of 32, and never having been in a real long relationship, I knew there were questions going around both the Doncasters and the McGillanies that maybe Paul didn't have the stuff to contribute to the family tree. But things had been going good enough and long enough with this new redditted girlfriend of mine that I invited her to my parents' 4th of July cookout. And we took Erin, daughter of one of the 46, down to the beach that afternoon and we dug in the sand and we hunted for shells and I held her hands as we dipped her in and out of the waves. We had a blast. And I got the sense that maybe life was about to take a turn. The wedding was three years later and my own daughters came along in 2002 and 2004. And finally, I had the life of committed partnership that I always hoped I'd have until one night 15 years later when I learned that I didn't. And as difficult as it is to deal with all the hurt and the anger and the guilt and the shame that goes along with that kind of discovery, what I really had difficulty dealing with was the sense that I'd failed my daughters, the two people to whom I owed everything. I had to have the devastating conversations that no parent wants to have with his child and I also had to navigate them through new uncertainties that they didn't want or ask for or understand. And more than anything, I felt a very strong need to make sure that the place that they knew as home remained a place where they had their own space and where they felt safe, secure, and protected, because that's what fathers do. All of this happened to coincide with the onset of my own father's cancer, which only added to the guilt. At a time when he and my mother both needed the support of all their kids more than ever, I felt like a 51-year-old burden. But we became closer in those months than we had been in years. It's almost as if he stared down his cancer and said, you go sit your ass in the corner. My kid needs me. He helped me get through the most difficult period of my life because that's what fathers do. Shortly after the divorce was finalized, his health took a serious turn for the worse. And I delivered his eulogy a month and a half later. And at the reception after the funeral, I had to take a break from all the condolences and well wishes and stories that people were telling about my dad. And I went to the bar and I was standing there and I heard my name called out. And I turned around, and there was Aaron, still with the red hair and the fair skin, now 23, a beautiful and confident young woman who, as it turns out, also grew up in the aftermath of a busted marriage. I can't say for certain these were her exact words to me. This is what I remember. She said, Paul, for whatever it's worth, I've been paying attention to your situation over the past year, and I know that you're probably really anxious about how all of this is affecting the girls. And as someone who grew up in that situation, I want you to know that from where I sit, you're doing all the right things. And as long as you continue to do them, believe me, the girls are gonna be just fine. I stammered something that ended with thank you and she gave me a big hug and turned and disappeared into the crowd. Where I once held her hands, now she was holding mine. And it wasn't just Aaron's hands, it was also the hands of my father and my mother and both of my sisters 
and every friend and family member who'd always set the good example. Believe me when I tell you, the circle of life is as wondrous as it is dispassionate. And when allowed to turn in an environment of goodness and decency and love, the good stuff sown early comes back to you in truly extraordinary ways from the people you might not expect at the moments you need it most. Thank you for the story, Aaron. <laughs>